Before we can use this jig, it needs to be commissioned on the saw. And that means ensuring that this face is vertical, that it's traveling in the same direction that it's facing and it's not moving like that, and that the curve compensation stop is set to match the blade that I'm using. I've got a little problem here which needs sorting out. I've got my nylon bolts in as far as they will go and it's still not far enough. It's not square. So I'm going to have to trim a bit off this bottom edge and re-tap these holes to make them deeper so that I can screw these in further and that will bring this face forward at the top. That's better. That's right. Excellent. Now we've got to adjust the screws on the under rails to make sure. And that's not too bad, actually. It's not far off, but there is some play in this. So we need to eliminate that play whilst keeping it pointing straight forward. It's pretty close though. The guide rails underneath are salvaged from my original jig. Being maple, I can tap an M6 hole quite successfully. They serve two purposes. They eliminate play so that the jig rides smoothly and they ensure that the jig travels true north and not with any yaw. I don't think I'm going to get it any better than that. The ultimate table saw tenon jig automatically adjusts for the thickness of the blade. And this is done with that big beautiful brass curve compensation knob. My friend Andy made the mistake of once saying, Steve, if you need any small bits of turning, like brass knobs, just let me know. And that was filed under O for one day. So I reminded him of this rash offer and look what turned up. Aren't they beautiful? I was going to use a knurled one, but I've decided to use it on something I use more often than this occasional jig. I could do with a new pencil gauge, so I think I'll use it for that. It doesn't have to be brass, of course. Any knob with a flat face will work, and my first one was just a piece of plywood. When the jig is closed, it doesn't do anything. But when a spacer is put in, it works its magic, and it's dead easy to set up. So now, when we push these two pieces together, the gap that's down the middle made by the blade moves to the edge. So we've got this little lip here, which is exactly the same size as the curve of the blade. Now the first thing to do is to clamp this piece here. Like that. And this needs to go in there. So I'll just slacken that off and screw it in until it's like that. And we want to arrange it so that this and this are gripped to the same degree. So it's a question of judgment. But that is pretty good. And that is pretty good. So look, we'll just try it. We may need to adjust it. But once this is set, 
it never needs to be changed again until I use a different blade for the job.